Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations, a weekly podcast focusing on e-commerce topics featuring interviews with prominent people in the e-commerce space. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations by Practical E-Commerce. I'm Kerry Murdoch. Attempts to simplify the administration and collection of internet sales taxes in the US may be the most daunting task in the e-commerce industry. There are thousands of state, county, and municipal taxation districts and they all have different tax rates and rules. But the Streamlined Sales Tax Organization is attempting to make it easier for e-commerce merchants and its executive director, Scott Peterson, is here to update us on that organization's progress. Well, Scott, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Gary. It's nice to be with you. Scott, several states, as you know, have been in the news lately with their own plans for collecting Internet sales taxes, in particular linked to affiliates of merchants in those in that state. New York and Illinois are two states that come to mind that have been that have uh, that are attempting to do that. And my question for you today is uh my first question is what's the SSTP's view of that action by these states? We really don't have an opinion per se uh or on these particular on that particular issue because we have at least two of our member states that adopted that. Uh, Rhode Island and North Carolina are both members of Streamline. And um, while we we would prefer that the other states, you know, make their sales tax better, the fact that two of our member states decided that this was something they needed to do in addition to making the sales tax better, uh, the governing board doesn't. It, dec- it decided no, that's a that's a state by state issue, and we're not going to have an opinion on that. Scott, doesn't that run counter to your mission? That is, you've got states that strikes me without being a sales tax expert, which I am certainly not, but that strikes me as counter to streamlining if someone is developing their own methodology for computing sales tax. If all the state does is adopt that affiliate nexus legislation, it does run counter to one of our two primary goals. We have two goals. First one is to make the sales tax simpler and more uniform for people who are collecting the sales tax. And the second is to get all the sales tax collected. Um, by adopting that affiliate nexus dial legislation, those states do think they are trying to get at a second goal. But I, I would agree that it uh, doing that in and of itself does not make your sales tax any better. It perhaps gets some of the sales tax collected, but it doesn't make your sales tax better for retailers. Is it, do those states, are they able to raise more money by doing that than what they would otherwise raise if they were simply uh, simply following the recommendations of your organization? That's one of the issues, one of the struggle, things we struggle with in our organization is that making your sales tax better doesn't in and of itself produce any revenue. And I mean, it's the kind of thing that you have to do because it's 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 a good public policy decision to make. Um, and New York is collecting additional revenue from their Amazon style Nexus legislation, but from what I can tell, they're the only state that is, and uh, and, this, and, that, and that's because some of the really large uh, online only retailers didn't end their affiliate relationships. But in every other state where the legislation has been adopted, they've ended their affiliate relationships. 
and when you end the affiliate relationship, you end the applicability of the tax. No affiliate, then you're not subject to the tax. Um, Streamline states do collect revenue uh, as as members of Streamline, but it's really a lot more to do with some of the non-Streamline things that we've all agreed to do together instead of simply making your tax better. Retailers don't collect taxes unless they have a valid business reason to do it. And the valid business reason is either the law tells them that they have to or their customers insist that they do it. Is the collection of Internet sales taxes from your vantage point, Scott, is it in fact becoming more streamlined? It is. Um, some of that is what we have been doing. We identified the issues that created complexity by asking retailers. And since we've tried to solve the problems that the retailers have told us make the tax complicated, uh, we believe that the decisions that, that the decisions and the changes we've convinced states to make have made the tax easier for retailers to collect. But the, I mean, the, the overwhelming reason why sales tax administration is becoming easier is because of the, the, the huge increase in technology. Because te- technology can solve most of the problem, doesn't solve all the problem, and so we're trying to identify those areas where the, you know, the, the technology can't solve the problem. Give us an example of what you're referring to there, Scott. A thing that technology doesn't solve very well is definitions, hmm. where you have you know five states all exempting the same thing and having different definitions of what the thing and having the definitions be just enough difference that you as a retailer have to have almost an entirely different set of tax rules for each of the states, even though they're all trying to exempt, exempt exactly the same thing. It's not the kind of thing that technology makes very simple. Um, or in, in, in another example in definitions is to have definitions that are so narrow that every time you as a retailer bring some new product out that looks like it might be inside that definition, you have to reach out and ask that state. And so one of the things that we got the states to agree to was broad definitions that the retailer doesn't have to ask anybody what that definition means in relationship to the products they sell. They can look at the definition and know immediately, oh, yeah, this is or this isn't. So that's an example. The example you're citing there for definitions, certain types of products yeah, I mean, it, that may not be. Yes, def, uh, definitions are hard to put into a computer. And when I when I when I talk to state legislators, I tell them, you know, you can create whatever sales tax policy that you want, but when you're writing that law, make sure that the answer is either yes or no, because it's only yes or no that you can put on that computer. And everybody's running their sales tax system now through a computer. And if the answer isn't yes or no, that retailer can't put that in their computer. They have to have any. They have, there has to be a person that deals with that particular issue. Scott, give our listeners, uh, our listeners, of course, our e-commerce merchants, give our listeners uh, uh, a quick primer background on your organization. You're the executive director, of course, as the Streamline Sales Tax Organization. Tell us briefly when it's formed, why it was formed. What's the current status of your organization? What's your purpose? We were formed, uh, we had our first meeting in March of 2000 at the direction of the National Governors Association and the National Conference of State Legislatures. And we were told to come back to create a, a, a sales tax system that was significantly and even radically simpler and more uniform than it was at that time. We spent uh, two years interviewing multi-state retailers asking them what made sales tax administration expensive and or complicated from their perspective since they they were the best ones to ask because each state in and of itself didn't have a clue what made their sales tax complicated uh, it's having to collect multiple state sales taxes that makes the system complicated so the best people to ask for the problems are the multi-state retailers we spent two years asking them what the problems were and then trying to arrive at a one way of doing things, a sales tax administration best practice. And we 
and then there were 25 to 30 of these different areas that, that the retailers identified for us, and we took two years to figure out how to make those come up with one answer for each of them. And then we spent three years trying to convince state legislatures to change their laws. Um, a, a very difficult thing to get done um, because, first of all, you had to convince a state legislator that his, say, his or her sales tax was broken, and of course they didn't believe that. And then you had to convince them that there was a better way of doing what they were doing, and they were pretty sure they were doing the best thing that anybody ever thought about doing. Um, but we have, and then we spent, uh, and we incorporated in 2005, um, became an, an official organization, and since then we've been continuing to try to get more states to change the law. Uh, we have 24 states now that are members, and uh, so we have more than half of the states with a sales tax that are members of Streamline, and we continue to work on, on getting the rest of the state. So a state that's a member, what does that mean exactly? What what requirements, if I could use that term, does that does that impose on that state when they become a member? It it, <laughs> it imposes a lot. Um, Georgia just joined, and, and their, their Department of Revenue is not particularly happy about being a member because of the, the, the additional work that comes from being a member. But the the principal thing is that each of the states agrees to do the same thing the same way. So they all have the same definition of groceries. They all have the same definition of candy. They all have the, the same definition of, of the critical uh, critical definition in sales tax, which is sales price. They all agree on how they are going to administer their different exemptions. They can have different exemptions. Minnesota doesn't have to tax groceries just because South Dakota taxes groceries. But in both situations, that retailer knows that the definition of groceries in Minnesota and South Dakota are exactly the same, even though it's taxable in one state and exempt in another state. Mm. They agree to to work together to certify sales tax administration software so that it's as accurate as it's possible to make it, that it then that they then provide liability relief for the folks, the retailers that, that use that software, and in the certain circumstances, they agree to pay for that software. Uh, they all agree to abide by the rules. Um, so if the governing board says tomorrow that that a particular item is a piece of durable medical equipment, well, those states that exempt durable medical equipment, they just they have agreed that they're now having that they're going to exempt that product. Mm. Uh, even though they might in the past have come to a different conclusion as to whether or not that was truly du- durable medical equipment. Mm-hmm. Where do you get your funding, your organization? We are an association, and each of the states that are members pay dues. What's your staff? What sort of staff do you have there? Uh, we're, we're very small. There's three and a half. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not enough. Yeah? <laughs> but that's... That's what we can afford. Keeps you busy. I mean, we're, we're busy. Uh, you alluded, Scott, to technology of making this simpler, of making the process for merchants to collect and pay sales taxes. Technology providers can do that for merchants, of course, uh, linked to their shopping cart, that sort of thing. It has been suggested to us that that is an inherent contradiction that is an inherent contradiction with what the SS, with, with what the Streamlined Sales Tax Organization is trying to accomplish. On the one hand, you're trying to streamline and simplify sales tax rules. On the other hand, you are dependent on programs, technology providers, to make it all work for you. Is there a contradiction there? I don't think that's a contradiction. I think it's an acknowledgement that some things you just can't make so simple that you can eliminate the need for the technology. I mean, frankly, the technology works so well inside today's shopping carts that even if the sales tax were so simple, I mean, if there was one, if every state taxed exactly the same thing and there was one rate in each state, which is the holy grail for you know sales tax simplicity, mm-hmm. you'd still build it into your shopping cart. You'd still have to have something in your shopping cart that said, oh, okay, I'm selling X, 
and X is taxable in every state, and I know I'm shipping this product to this state, and that state sales tax rate is Y. So I need I, I need to know my my software needs to know that X is one of the things that all the states have agreed to tax, and that the state of shipment is the sales tax rate is Y. So regardless of how simple one gets the sales tax, you're still going to want to build it into your shopping cart, and you still have to that that technology. There has to be technology because no no online retailer certainly, and frankly almost no over-the-counter retailer is without a computerized accounting system. And that these things are all driven more so, I mean, they're driven by the complexity, but they're also driven by your accounting system. You have to be able to integrate these things, uh, and you want your computer to do that for you. So just to follow on what you're saying there, if assume that there's a single tax rate and all the definitions are the same, a merchant would still have to know where a consumer is living, and a merchant would still have to presumably fill out a sales tax report, send a check to that local jurisdiction, even if all the rates are the same, just to oversimplify that. Absolutely. Yeah, if, if, if every state taxed and exempted exactly the same uh, group of products, and the only difference between the states was that, you know, in Minnesota the sales tax rate was 5%, and in New York, in New York the sales tax rate is 7%, well, if you're making shipments in Minnesota and New York, you need to be able to distinguish between Minnesota and New York sales and charge the right rate, and then at the end of the month, send each of them the sales tax you've collected. You're just going to integrate that inside your sales and accounting system because they're so intertwined uh, that you, you just you, there's it's not a contradiction. We don't think it's a, an inherent conflict at all uh, because there isn't any other way a rational person would do it. Tell us the technology vendors. You have approved technology vendors approved by the uh, Streamlined Sales Tax Organization. Mm -hmm. uh, who are who are those companies? I'm going to do this in alphabetical order. Okay. Just so I don't I don't offend anyone. All right. And that's why we have them on our website. Okay. Um, a company called Avalara, A V A L A R A. Mm -hmm. ADP, Automatic Data Processing, mm -hmm. Accurate Tax, mm -hmm. Exactor, mm -hmm. Fed Tax, the Federal Tax Authority, and Speed Tax. And actually, at the end of this week, I'm going to send an email out to the world um, advertising this window where we look for additional certified service providers. All right. We have just a couple of minutes here left, Scott. Has there been any merchant, has an e-commerce merchant gotten in trouble or had been otherwise been penalized from not collecting sales tax that he or she should have? Honestly, I don't know. To be able to answer that question, I'd have to have inside state data information, which I don't longer have anymore. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the only thing, the, the first thing that popped in my mind was Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um Yep. In their in their dilemma with the state of Texas, according to what I see in the paper, the, that Amazon has a facility of some form inside the state of Texas, described as a warehouse, and the state of Texas is taking the position that the facility, because it is a physical a physical presence inside the state of Texas, creates a physical present for Amazon.com and that Amazon.com should have been collecting sales tax from the time when that facility was, was began operation in Texas. So it'll be interesting to see where where the, the, the two of them come out on this issue. Normally, physical presence is, is all that's required, and um, in a lot of states, a warehouse is enough physical presence to require the online merchant to collect. Scott, the last minute or so here, uh, anything else on your mind today for our listeners who are e-commerce merchants, mainly smaller e-commerce merchants? As consumers continue their shift from, from catalog to the Internet and from stores to the Internet, the amount of tax that goes uncollected is going to continue to grow. And at some point in time, 
and, and, and merchants of, of every sort should not be surprised that states take a very aggressive and creative approach on what it takes to require someone to collect. Um, there are, I, I'm, in, my, in my opinion, the online merchant world would be much, much better served if they went to Congress and said, okay, we're willing to do this, but these are the rules. Because that's what the states are doing. And that's what the big uh, bricks and mortar stores, the states, with, with, with the states, have gone to Congress and said, okay, we want everyone to collect under these rules. And the online merchant industry ought to be um, getting themselves in front of Congress and saying, okay, these are the rules we think we should collect under. There needs to be a debate because this, this issue has to be resolved in favor of collection because the alternative is the sales tax just dies. And if the sales tax dies, everybody should like their property taxes and their income taxes because that's all you're going to have. <laughs> okay. Well, for purposes of our listeners, we've been visiting with Scott Peterson. Scott is the executive director of the Streamlined Sales Tax Organization. That website is streamlinedsalestax.org. Again, streamlinedsalestax.org. And Scott Peterson, the executive director, we want to thank you for your time today, sir. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have for this week's e-commerce conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tune in next week for another new episode.